Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I am David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness and the author of Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. I'll show you the book a little later, especially if you've seen it already. You don't need to see it. All right, check it out. Chakras, right? I told you I'd be showing you some charts. We'd be talking about some things. I got to make sure you can see that. Hopefully you saw it the first time. You see it again. I know you can't read that all completely clearly, but we got some chakras going on here. We have some energy centers. We have some vortexes. And for those of you that are not familiar with the chakras, these are, yes, energy centers, energy vortices. They sit uh, in conjunction with the body in relationship to glands and to the endocrine system. The endocrine system Literally, there are certain glands sitting within each one of those chakras. And each one of these chakras is like a level of perception. It's been talked about like this by many master teachers and gurus and so on. Um, each one of these energy centers represents different levels of consciousness, different levels of awareness, different levels of manifesting and creating and being and all of these different levels and there's a couple of more you saw on the other chart maybe briefly you may have noticed there was two more chakras on that other chart which is one of the charts from our medical qigong program uh, if you watched the previous video uh, previous episode i talked about how in medical qigong it's talked about that there is an eighth chakra that eighth chakra when the light comes through it and the light pierces it uh, we get these seven chakras. We get the colors of a rainbow, just like coming through a prism. So each one of these different chakras represents a different level of consciousness, a different, different level of awareness. For example, I'm wearing red, the color of the root chakra. Uh, we see a fast Corvette go by. We assume it's fast if it's red. Uh, anyway, red is associated with the root. Um, red is associated with uh, survival. Uh, red is associated in certain cases. A lot of people, so I was working with a coaching client the other day, and he said, oh, you're wearing your power shirt. I happen to be wearing this shirt, the same shirt that I'm doing these five episodes now in. I'm knocking five of them out for now, and then we'll do some more later. You'll see me change attire when, maybe when we go to the sixth episode. Anyway, uh, I'll wear a different color for you, maybe a different chakra color. Anyway, this is something we can also do. We can purposefully wear certain colors related to certain chakras to bring about certain things. I told you in the previous video, the yellow color is related to power. It's related to the power center. Having something yellow, you're wearing something yellow, whatever that happens to be. It could be something related to jewelry. It could be something clothes-wise, etc. can bring out that element of personal power. But more than that, these chakras, again, are levels of awareness, they're levels of consciousness. And if you think about it in terms of a cup, I want to give you a simple idea today, give you hopefully some food for thought, and maybe lead you into closer and closer here into more and more practices of how this is done. So if you think about the human body as a vessel, and you think about it as a cup, and you think about it in terms of whether the cup is full or the cup is empty or the cup is half empty or it's partially empty. When the energy is built up in the system, it builds up, it builds up, it builds up, right? Then not only is energy building, consciousness is climbing that ladder. Consciousness is climbing that chakra ladder. That's one way of thinking of it. It's simplified, but it is one way of thinking about it. When we don't have enough energy, when we have burnt up our chi, when we have depleted our chi, when we've depleted our energy, when we've depleted our essence, which is called jing in Chinese medicine, when we've depleted that, then we've also depleted our consciousness. We've also depleted our awareness. We're not only are we tired, we may be, we may be depressed. Not only are we depressed, we also swing to anxiety, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or we're locked into fear, or we're locked into depression because we don't want to feel the fear. 
So Qigong means the skilled cultivation of universal life force, or in general, we could think of it as the skilled cultivation of qi or the skilled cultivation of energy. And in chapter one of my book, <clears throat> Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality, which by the way, I'm absolutely promoting without a doubt because I'm the only one promoting it. And uh, uh, when I sell it, when you go to lulu.com, it's probably the cheapest price you can get on the book is to go to lulu.com and look up my book and look up my name and so forth. Um, you can also find it on the front page of our website, qigongawareness.com. Uh, you know, I make, I make maybe a dollar sixty off of the book after it's printed and everything else. So uh, even though I am pitching the book and I'm pitching the teachings, um, I have a much bigger plan and a much bigger purpose to uh, help you guys as much as I can. But here's chapter one, okay? And I'm going to be, again, talking about the book in some of these episodes. And uh, in chapter one, I simply say the title is, How Does It Work? Um, the first quotation is from Dr. Oz. It says, if you want to be healthy and live to be 100 years, do Qigong. Uh, the second chapter, I'm just going to jump ahead uh, to give you the concepts here that I want to share with you today. Um, the second chapter is harnessing your energy. So come back to the idea of the chakras, okay? And I'm sorry for the jumping around and disappearing on you and so on uh, to pull this up, but <laughs> that's the way we're going to do it for today. So if you think about this as a cup filling up, okay, energy filling up, consciousness goes up, all right? There's conversations uh, hinted to in the Bible. There's conversations hit, hit, uh, hinted to in Hindu teachings and Buddhist teachings and so on and so forth. The idea of a fall, okay? In the Bible, it's called the fall. The fall is a fall in consciousness. It's a fall in energy, okay? It's going from the very, very non-physical to the more and more physical, as we get down here to the third chakra, we're talking about the mental body or thinking, okay, for example. When we get down to the second chakra here, we're talking about emotions and we're talking about the emotional body. When we get down here, we become even more physical related to the root chakra and we talk about the physical body and the physical level of consciousness and the physical level of survival. So for example, if you are in fight or flight, and anxiety and so on. Guess what? The root chakra is what is controlling the adrenals. So when the uh, mind perceives a threat, the root chakra fires up, it grabs a hold of the adrenals and starts to secrete adrenaline, for example. And so you have these fight and flight, fight or flight, or fight and flight responses, or freeze responses, okay, etc. And the chakras and the hormone system, it works together. When you start practicing specific types of Qigong to fill your tank and to deplete, not deplete, let's say um, detox the lower chakras, which actually are depleted, but detox them, create space and create room for new chi, new energy to live and to be and to participate and so on, then literally what happens is you start getting a filling up of the tank, okay? Not only do you get healing in the chakras, the mind itself starts lifting up out of that energy. So in, again, referring to some of the ancient texts, including the Bible, these kinds of ideas were referred to as ascension, the idea of consciousness going back up the chakra ladder, moving back up the ladder of consciousness and having a higher perception, a higher um, reality, a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of awareness. The name of our company is Qigong Awareness, and that doesn't just mean the awareness of Qigong, it means the awareness of your own Qi, the awareness of your own energy, the awareness of your own consciousness. So, very important concept. So many people talk about these kinds of ideas and philosophize about them, and that's a great place to start. What I love about Qigong practices and some of the other physical disciplines that I do is that there is a physical practice and there is a discipline. 
to learn to control the breath, to learn to control the heart rate, to learn to slow yourself down, to build up your chi and build up your energy. And in general, that sounds nice, right? You go to a seminar and somebody says, we're going to build up your chi, we're going to build up your energy. And what I've seen in a lot of different arenas of uh, practice is people fill up on energy and enthusiasm and so on and so forth. Uh, but a lot of people become very ungrounded and many people will have catharsis, but the catharsis leaves them literally messed up for years. Like I meet people and they'll say, I've been messed up for years this is the first time I've decided to try Qigong again. You know, it was 10 years ago. I had this experience. I was out of my body. I lost control. I didn't know what was going on, blah, blah, blah. So when we get into the energetic work, the, the reason that I love Oriental medicine and Taoist practice is it is very technical and it is very specific and there are specific things we're looking for that can tell us what is happening within our, within our own chakra system, within somebody else's chakra system, if we're working on that person. And then, of course, we have other levels of understanding within the Chinese medicine system, including what is called and what is termed the lower Dan Tian. In Japanese martial arts, we call it the Hara. This is the same vicinity that I've been hinting to that is called the same area of the second brain, the area of the Nadi's egg. Anyway, what's up with this area? What's up with this area is that this area is like a reservoir. In fact, it's considered uh, a reservoir. It's called an elixir field. That's essentially what Dantian means. And this elixir field, this lower Dantian, think about how disconnected you are and how many people are disconnected to their gut. They really don't know what's going on down there unless they have a stomach ache or they have a problem or so on and so forth. But if you sit in meditation long enough, or you do standing tree meditation long enough, or you have a medical Qigong healing session, whether it's in person or even at a distance, you're going to feel your belly rumble. Your belly is going to rumble. Something's going to start changing there. And what's changing, oftentimes in uh, Qigong practice, there's the reference of alchemy, the idea of turning lead into gold. What is the lead? The lead is the heavy emotions, it's the stagnation, it's the carbon dioxide, it's the lack of breath, it's the stress, it's all of those things. Taking that energy, uh, as the first law of thermodynamics states, energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, but we can change it from one form to another form. Our body allows us to do this. The lower Dantian, if you've ever seen a picture of the Buddha, I don't have one with me right now, maybe another time I'll show you that, um, but, and I don't like to spend a lot of time going back and editing these videos because I'm a very busy person. I'm working with a lot of people and I'm teaching a lot of people and so on and so forth. So please bear with me in the way that I teach. Hopefully you, you, you like it. And I'll bring you, bring you back a picture of the Buddha with the belly open. And you'll see a fire. You'll see a cauldron. And you'll literally see that. And you might wonder, what is that? The lower Dantian is that furnace. And it is about creating a true heat in the body, a spiritual heat in the body that has the ability to cook and melt and transform your past. Because that is literally your, the past is living in your body. The past is living in your brain. It's living there energetically. And if you don't do something to change it through your breathing, through your energy work practices, through changing your blood, through changing your endocrine system, then your body, your being is becoming very much like a robot. So what we want to do is we want, in, we want to introduce, as an Eckhart Tolle, for example, would say, we want to introduce awareness into the system. We want to introduce consciousness into the levels of unawareness. Qigong has very specific ways of going in and interrupting these old habitual patterns of breathing, of standing, of walking, of talking, all of these kinds of things. So this is what we're going to be doing is we are going to be breaking habits very consciously, very deliberately to do what? To give you a new and improved experience. The moment you change inside and the moment you change, and I didn't say this before, some of you who work with me, you already know this, 
but if you've never worked with me before, conscious awareness is sitting on that ladder somewhere in your chakra system. For most people, it's sitting down there somewhere within the first three chakras. It's bouncing around down there, and the consciousness itself is living in fear. In order to elevate your consciousness and raise your consciousness, it's not as simple as putting on some crystals and putting on a robe and saying a few mantras, although that might help, okay? There are more concentrated practices, disciplined practices of seated meditation, standing meditation, moving meditation, etc., to begin to learn to understand and to know your body better. The body in many traditions is considered a temple, okay? Most people don't treat it that way, but it is considered a temple. And so learning to work with your temple, learning to work with your alchemical furnace, learning to work with your chakra system. When you change inside, you change everything that's happening around you in a positive way. In other words, if you change what's happening inside you positively, you're going to change what's going on outside of you positively. So if you don't have the book, please go ahead and pick it up. I highly recommend it. You can also get it for an ebook. Um, it's very cheap. Uh, you can get an ebook on lulu.com. The name of the book, again, is Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. You can just look it up under my name, David J. Kuhn, or you can go to our website, qigongawareness.com, on the homepage. Anyway, stay tuned. I hope you're enjoying these episodes, and I look forward to getting into greater and greater detail, taking you deeper and deeper, and talking about things like the pandemic and the, what's going on there and what you can do about it what you can do about it, not all the problems with it, but what can you do to change you from the inside out? All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. Take care.